And this is, again, the Electric Shock V2. Uh, my first video was in a very tight spaces and uh, just showing how versatile this thing is. I want to uh, fly a little bit in more open space today and um, it's actually in a pretty fair amount of wind today as well, just to uh, give you a little idea of how versatile and how much fun this thing is to fly. Uh, but before I do, I want to uh, tell everybody something. The servos that are being used in here are servos that are relatively small and I've had a lot of experience with them with foamies and things like that over the years. And just about every servo of this size I've ever tried, they're terrible. They don't want to serve, they don't have the power, the gears break. Um, these things are amazing. They center like a much larger servo. Uh, they're very strong, very consistent, and uh, boy, I couldn't be happier with them. And you know, you don't have to just use these for PA planes. They are amazing servos. So if you've got a project coming up, um, you know, you really have to try these servos. They're absolutely awesome. A couple of things I really like about this shock is uh, the way it does tumble. You see the authority in the uh, in the surfaces. Definitely not like a foamy. Watch this. Watch it wrap up. This is something that you know, just foamies don't do well because they really don't have that much uh, mass or momentum. So, you know, this quick tumbling, uh, things of that nature. I think it looks fantastic, and I think it's a lot of fun to do that stuff. Um, it'll do other things that the foamies generally don't like to do, especially the profile ones, which are, you know, these quick maneuvers. Um, uh, the, the ailerons are obviously really fast. You know, of course, what this thing is best at is this stuff, you know, where the, the plane loves to hover. It loves to do the low, slow stuff. It's very windy here today, but even in the wind, you see this thing is nice and stable. But the beauty of uh, uh, the, the balsa as opposed to a, uh, a profile foamy is the absolutely immediate response of the controls. Watch this. I mean, that's something a foamy just can't do. Um, the, the foamies are very sloppy. I, I mean, even the Wargo Yak and other planes like that that I've, you know, in, endorsed and are, are, you know, my designs. This one is just more solid, you know. Uh, the rolling Harrys are always very sloppy um, with the tail section, but this one, as you can see, is really nice. If you even watch the videos uh, of my yak and things, you can see the twist in the tail as I'm doing these maneuvers. Even though the maneuvers look nice, uh, it's just a little different feel. But this is solid like a balsa plane, like the Addiction maybe. If you look here, look at the difference in the angle from the wing to the tail and exactly how much twist is in this. This particular one was just on an outside single rolling loop. This was a rolling harrier and look at the twist in the body and the, uh, the elevator. It's quite significant and again that's what does not happen with the balsa. Uh, just to illustrate the twist that I was talking about in the foamies. This happens the whole, look, the whole time I'm flying, this is going on, okay? Um, you know, you've seen this plane fly and it flies so well, um, but it doesn't mean this stuff isn't going on constantly. I mean, this is literally that flexible in flight as it's going, when the plane turns right, the plane is flexing this way. It's not that you can't do the maneuvers and you can practice them with the foamies. I still love the foamies, um, but it's completely different with the balsa model. There is just, you know, this is not going to twist. This is very solid. And the result is, again, not that you can't do the maneuvers. It's just a little sloppy and it just feels different. It's mushy. We'll never have that problem with this plane. But the things I like the most have everything to do with 
uh, the surface authority, watch. Dead straight and stop it right on the mark. These are things I literally just cannot do with the foamies. But let me make it clear, when I say I can't do it, the foamies will do it. It will just never be this crisp and precise. You know, with this nice, uh, you know, mix, this thing will turn inside of itself. It'll flip really quick. It's got a lot of authority on the surfaces. Again, just watch this controlled spin. Just beautiful. And all of that is associated with the control involved in balsa. So what I'm trying to uh, say to everyone is if you can get yourself uh, out of that uh, fear factor of anything being balsa because it's breakable, the trade-off is tremendous. And this is also very light. You know, I've hit the ground with this thing probably 15 times so far, and I haven't even come close to having a problem but the wing, everything is very, very consistent. You saw in some of the other videos, it's a little too windy now to do it, but this, this nice uh, flat spin where the plane was just rising and going up, again, that's all wind uh, oriented, but. A feature of the nice big ailerons is when they're deflected full on a downline, it really slows the plane down. It's really fun to just spin the ailerons like that and let the plane come down slowly. Again, these ailerons are very fast. Of course, for me and a lot of better pilots, they're, the plane's ability to be controlled like this, nice and slow and straight. Very important. Uh, for me, it's absolutely critical that a plane does the low, slow stuff and also can fly very straight lines. And of course, down low, like in this inverted Harrier, having the ability to stay, you know, so stable and then quick flip it. It's all about control. And let's not, you know, forget control on knife edge and things like that. My confidence in all of these maneuvers has mostly to do with the control that I have with this airplane because it is balsa and very stiff. From, you know, kind of quick snaps and stuff like this or, uh, you know, tumbling and things of that nature, a lot of it is really based on the fact that this plane is very rigid and very controllable. Anyway. Like I said, I believe this is an absolutely fantastic design for training, small spaces, all that kind of stuff. Uh, it's definitely going to be in my car all the time. Uh, last but not least, that little 1,000 milliamp battery. Uh, they're, you know, relatively inexpensive. And again, this thing is so small, it's easy to carry.